and here is a spinal cord you will see that this anterior spinal artery supplying the anterior two-third of the spinal cord anterior two-third of the spinal cord okay it means it's going to cover the lateral horny cells ventral horny cells lateral column and anterior column so lateral column anterior column ventral horn lateral horn all of them supplied by this artery which is a spinal anterior spinal artery so anterior spinal artery supplying the anterior two-third of the spinal cord okay and from there you can conclude and or understand what tracts are going to be supplied by the anterior spinal artery tracts located here in the lateral column like corticospinal very important and also anterior corticospinal spinothalamic tract rubrospinal tract spinocerebellar tracts so most of the tracts supplied by the anterior spine however posterior spinal artery is going to supply they are going to supply the posterior column and when i say posterior column and the posterior horn so we are talking about what about gracile and the cuneate tract let us translate this into function proprioception function discriminative touch proprioception vibration okay from the whole body and the posterior horn the sensation so basically you need to keep in mind this fact anterior spinal supplying posterior third anterior spinal supply anterior to third are this the only two arteries keep in mind that spinal cord is very long and this arteries coming from inside cranial cavity passing through descending through foramen magnum and they descend the long long distance so they have to be supplemented by some other arteries coming from the side those arteries we call them radicular arteries radicular arteries okay so what are those radicular arteries radicular arteries those are segmental arteries radicular or segmental arteries what are those they are coming from in the neck region in the thoracic region lumbar region sacral region or pelvic region from different sources in neck region they coming from vertebral coming from ascending cervical vertebral ascending cervical artery which is a branch of inferior thyroid okay in thoracic region coming from intercostal arteries is the biggest one coming from descending aorta in lumbar region they are coming from lumbar arteries lumbar arteries sacral region from lateral sacral arteries lateral sacral arteries okay and here is the spinal cord intervertebral foramen so this arteries they are coming from vertebral or ascending cervical then travel through the intervertebral foramen and descending and then divide into anterior division and the posterior division in the neck region in the thoracic region from the intercostal arteries and the descending aorta and the seam divide into anterior and the posterior this is the largest one it's called radicular artery of adam quakes adam quakes this is radicular this is the biggest radicular artery coming from descending aorta exactly between t9 and the lumbar one segment and to supplement the anterior spinal artery here 
and this artery is going to anastomose with it and supplement it just to give some more blood supply to the lower part of the spinal cord. This is the radicular artery of Adam Coix. This is the biggest one coming from descending aorta and supplement the anterior spinal artery. <coughs> anterior spinal artery. So this is the spinal cord, again, extends through the vertebral canal, receiving three major arteries, the anterior spinal and posterior spinal to the posterior part. These two arteries, posterior spinal artery, this one artery, anterior spinal artery, then they are going to be in, enforced by radicular arteries or segmental arteries through the whole length of the body, extending from vertebral artery, ascending cervical. Keep in mind that this one coming from inferior thyroid artery. Okay? There are other cervical arteries, like descending cervical coming from occipital. Ascending from inferior thyroid, descending coming from occipital artery. Then you have again intercostal, descending aorta, sending this Adam Quick's artery, which is the biggest one, and the lumbar artery, lateral sacral arteries in the pelvic region. Pelvic region. This is abdominal region. And this is thoracic region. Okay? So basically, you would see that the spinal cord is very rich in blood supply, okay? Blood supply coming through the cranial cavity, blood supply coming through or from cervical area, thoracic area, lumbar area, pelvic area, okay? Okay, this will be very helpful when it comes to clinical relevant and uh, when we discuss some clinical scenarios. <clears throat> Venous drainage corresponding to the artery, it means that the venous supply or venous drainage of the spinal cord is connected venous system connected with cranial cavity through foramen magnum. If you remember, there is something called the basilar plexus of vein on the clevis on the basilar part of occipital bone inside the cranial cavity. Also, it's going to communicate with segmental veins on each side in lumbar, pelvic region, thoracic region. What does this mean? When you have this intensive vertebral venous plexus inside the vertebral canal in relation to the spinal cord and has this connection through the foramen magnum with cranial cavity and has connection with abdominal, thoracic and the pelvic veins. It has two things to remember. First of all, first of all, that those veins, radicular veins, they connect the venous plexus with superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Correct? Those are the two big veins which take venous blood from lower part of the body and the upper part of the body back to the heart. So, and this venous plexus through the vertebral column or vertebral canal has connection with superior vena cava as the upper part, inferior vena cava as the lower part. It means that if there is obstruction in this one or that one, this venous plexus can be alternative route to refill the obstructed vein. Okay, to make it easy, here is the superior vena cava and this is the inferior vena cava, okay? If you have this venous plexus or this veins connecting the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava indirectly. So it means if there is obstruction here, so <coughs> venous blood can go back through this route, okay? Through this route and refill the superior vena cava and vice versa. If there is obstruction here, the venous blood can go back here and back to the heart. This is one good thing. But the bad thing that this venous plexus can also provide a route or route or a way for metastasis of cancer in the pelvic region, in the abdominal region, in the thoracic region, in the neck region, to the cranial cavity and CNS. If there is any cancer here in the neck region or thoracic region or abdominal region or pelvic region, you are not surprised if you see that metastasis 
or this cancer can spread through this vein to the brain or to the cranial cavity okay so keep in mind that thank you very much